The English pub has been a mainstay of British culture for over half a millennium. Since the dawn of the Middle Ages, pubs have served as a safe haven where great friends and greater beers are guaranteed. With a rich historical backdrop, the idea of the public house is one so drenched in the dyes of England's social fabric that Brits couldn't imagine a life without it. Pub culture in, in England, and particularly in London, it's, it is a massive part of life. I mean, I wouldn't know what to do with myself on the weekends, you know, or where would I to go and socialise. It's always at the pub. It's just second nature. London is home to the largest concentration of pubs in England, both old and new, and if you're looking to sit down with a group of friends and chat over a wide selection of booze, there's no better city. After all, it's the reigning cocktail capital of the world, and you'd be hard-pressed to walk 10 minutes without finding yourself ordering a drink at the bar. Sure, I think people come to pubs to socialise, you know, especially traditional pubs that they just have very quiet background music or no TVs, uh, just an opportunity to have a catch-up with people or people that come after work, you know, it's kind of to let off some steam after their hard day at work. I think it's something that you're brought up with um, from when I was a child. I mean, I, my parents always used to take me to the pub when, you know, we used to go and we used to play, I mean, very different pubs to what you have in London, but um, sort of out in the countryside, you know, you go and there'd be a play area. So you're always brought up with that sort of, you go to the pub, it's always a treat as a child. But what's so special about London? With such a colourful history of casks and ales, British drinking culture dates back centuries to medieval England where beer and wine dominated the social scene. From um, 1649 to 1660, we were actually a republic in this country. We didn't have a monarchy, but under Oliver Cromwell, who was the Lord Protector, he abolished things like pubs, theatre, and even didn't really take to Christmas. So we had a sense of um, life being a little bit dull, and people didn't like it. So it, it really got that feeling back when we got the monarchy back, that this is what we enjoy doing, we enjoy having fun, it's part of our society and it makes us feel more relaxed. The Great Fire of London nearly destroyed every pub in the city in 1666, but that didn't stop them from rebuilding faster and stronger. As the city expanded, pubs popped up farther and farther from the city, prompting the introduction of inns and coaching houses to provide a drink and sleep to weary travelers. Before they had um, automobiles, cars and trucks, uh, people went by coach and horse. And so what you had was this concept of the coaching inn, where if you were traveling from London to Edinburgh in Scotland, which is about 300 miles, um, you would have to make stops, so you know, at least uh, once or twice a day. So you have this concept of the coaching inns beside the major highways uh, across England. Most historic pubs fight to preserve their older nature, which often attracts tourists. Preserving history helps add to the charm of a local pub without fanfare or gimmicks, and they usually garner an eclectic group of patrons. The Lamb Flag is the oldest pub in central London, uh, and to this day is still a very traditional, old-fashioned British pub. Charles Dickens used to drink in here. Nowadays we get like lots of tourists coming here, it's quite famously known on lots of websites, lots of people coming, taking pictures of kind of the structure of the building and stuff. Uh, they've tried to keep it as original as possible. In recent years, public house culture has changed considerably. Nowadays, with just under 50,000 pubs in the UK alone, many places focus on the ambiance they provide for their clientele, whether it be a slow and easy setting or a bustling house with live music and entertainment. We get a lot of musicians coming in here. Um, most notably, we it used to be Amy Winehouse's local here, so we used to have her coming in quite a lot and as you can tell by a lot of the pictures around in the pub, um, you get a lot of musicians drinking here, playing here. Pub goers have noticed a significant change in the environment within the past few decades. Competition is at an all-time high to attract new customers and retain their regulars. Since, since I first started going to pubs, I mean, pubs have changed dramatically. I mean, um, everyone's had to up their game a lot. And, um, you know, back, you know, back sort of 10 years ago, pubs, pubs were kind of stuck in the 1980s. They were, they had really terrible food, you know, no, no live music. Um, obviously, the late light, we can now apply for late licenses. We're not stuck to 11 o'clock close. It's changed because I think the next generation came along and said, well, we just don't want to go into a smelly old pub where there's old guys sitting at the same chairs. We want something a bit more sort of cool and funky and, you know, different beers and guest beers and cocktails and nice foods. And, you know, it's just changed. We demand more now. It's, almost a bit like a, like a party in here, you know, we pump the music right up, you get people dancing, it's, 
it's totally different to what pubs were, you know, sort of 10, 15 years ago. And um, I think it, it's, and as well, because there's so many good operators out there now running really, really good pubs, everybody has to up their game and you have to be offering something special to get people in. They've always been a place for social gathering, but as customers' needs and um, uh, have changed and evolved over the years, uh, people just don't come here to drink, it's also a place to eat. In the past, it was also a place for entertainment, whether it was um, pool tables, slot machines, discos, all of that's occurred over the past 40 years. You know, whether it be live music or craft beer or really nice foods, I mean, you've got to be offering something special, I think. And back in the, back in the 90s, people didn't do that. There's that kind of that old man pub feel, is what we always say over here. And, um, you know, they'd have terrible carpets, you know, really bad furniture, you know, no, no music, people smoking at the bar. Whereas now, you know, it's all about nice, nice decor, nice atmosphere, you know, candles. It's, it's, cha it's changed dramatically. I mean, if you, if you went into a pub in England uh, 10, 15 years ago, it would be unrecognisable to what pubs are like now. In London, the pub culture now is turning into bars and um, showing a lot of sports events to happy hour, all these things which are really not traditional and that do deter people, older people and maybe families from going into the pubs when they see that they're dominated by young people, um, students and professionals. The biggest change in the pub scene in past years has been the introduction of a proper menu. Rising costs of alcohol and rent mean pubs have to pick up the slack in other areas. With so much working against them, pub owners and landlords are working hard to move with the times. People used to go out to the pub 30, 40 years ago, or even longer, and they'd go to the local pub and they'd sit in there all night, but they'd go there after they'd eaten. And you know, the, the nearest thing you got to food was a packet of crisps or some nuts, uh, or drinking a pint of Guinness. Of Whereas now, I think pub culture has developed into, you've got to serve food, otherwise people won't come to your pub. There is definitely a massive market now where um, off the back, I think of a lot of sort of celebrity chefs who have opened up their own um, pubs, gastro pubs. Um, Gordon Ramsay's got one just up on Parkway, which is just two minutes up the road. Um, and sort of like Heston, Heston Blumenthal, they've all opened up their own pubs. And people go into pubs now wanting a bit more from their food. So they kind of want more of a restaurant experience um, as opposed to your traditional English going and get a cheese and pickle sandwich, you know. The last transition has really been in the past five years this move towards in certain pubs towards this uh, concept of the gastro pub where they've done away with the pool table the disco the slot machines and they've bought in a uh, a near celebrity chef and they're putting on obviously a wider range of menu items more expensive uh, and obviously with that have um, priced up in terms of the type of drinks that they have on offer. I think food is a good thing because I think when you're drinking, it's best to have some food. You're more likely to be able to make it home walking in straight lines. At the same time, sometimes this means that, as you mentioned before, that um, pubs are divided between uh, maybe a seating area where you'd have quite a restaurant meal and an area just at the bar for, for drinkers. Um, so I think that um, serving um, food in a pub it is fine and it's a good thing because people can have a drink and eat something after work but at the same time it's definitely uh, losing the traditional pub. Unfortunately for the pub scene, finances make it hard to stay afloat. With recent financial problems across the UK, at least 100 pubs are shutting down every month due to rising alcohol prices and refusal to adapt to the changing culture. And I think it's kind of due to some landlords, they're really stuck in their ways and as much as traditional pubs are coming back, they are, they're not incorporating any of what the market wants. They're just sticking to what they want and what they know. They're not kind of willing to be open-minded. Obviously London has some of the um, highest priced real estate in the world and obviously that's also beginning to have an impact on uh, the pub uh, industry or the inn industry within the UK. You know, instead of paying hundreds of pounds, it's, it's tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands to renew the lease. 
and they can't afford to do it. So they've been taken over and converted into whatever they've been converted. So we're losing pubs off the high street, which is sad, really. We should keep as many pubs as we can. As the cost of real estate rises, the cost of alcohol shoots up as well, making it even harder for patrons to frequent their favorite pubs. Uh, as I said, like duty is increasing uh, every year. The cost of buying alcohol for us is, just goes up. We've just had a 3% price increase, which then we obviously we have to pass on to our customers. Plus, of course, you also have what I would call, and I touched on this earlier, the corporatization of the pub ownership structure, where the pub leasehold will typically be owned by the breweries. Uh, the company that owns it now, uh, Fuller's Brewery, they uh, bought over this pub about three or four years ago now. And they're not just only pubs, they are integrated um, uh, entertainment companies in their own right, owning pubs and hotels restaurant chains, etc. The United Kingdom implemented a smoking ban in July of 2007, effective in all indoor working places, a death sentence for thousands of pubs across the nation. For many UK citizens, alcohol and tobacco literally come hand in hand. The change of the social aspect of smoking and drinking affected some pubs worse than others. When the smoking ban came in, we were expecting to have a real a dip in, in takings, but we're very lucky in the fact that we've got a roof terrace and we have a small courtyard out the back, so we do have smoking area. Um, what it tends to do now is the smoking areas are the busiest parts of the pub, um, but it just makes the pub a lot more, a, a lot nicer environment to be in. And what's happened is pubs have decided that, well, in order to attract people to come to the pub, we've got to make a nice outside area. And this, this saying called smirting, have you heard of smirting? smoking and flirting so you get people outside smoking cigarettes and they're chatting and you get better conversation with the smokers outside because they're like the pariahs they've been banned to the outside and a lot of pubs now have heated areas they even have tvs outside so they can watch sporting events have a smoke and have a drink so that's actually quite dramatic over the last i don't know since they banned smoking maybe five eight years ago so i smoke cigars and you always used to most pubs had a nice cigar selection and now they don't sell any at all. So you have to bring your own. Pubs are constantly changing and evolving in order to keep up with customer demands. More and more pubs are offering their customers a wider selection of cask, draft, and bottled beers. Similar to the craft beer movement in America, the UK has seen a large increase in the number of imported and domestic lagers, ales, and ciders. I think they're going to be selling a lot of variety of beers because beer is just becoming massive. There are so many microbreweries in London alone. Um, I think they're definitely trying to get more hand pumps on and bigger spaces for more fridges to stack bottled beers. There's a big craze at the moment for craft beer, which is, um, which is really, really popular at the moment. Um, I mean, that's, that's taken off hugely in the last probably 18 months or so. Uh, a lot of American craft beers are now coming over here, very, very popular. After hundreds of years of the traditional family-style pub, it's clear that the future holds something completely different. Owners are moving towards a different style of pub, specifically focusing on craft beers, good food, and a vibrant atmosphere. I think there's an incredible amount of identity with the pub. I think that um, it's part of our culture. It's what we're proud of as well. Uh, we're proud that people can drink together and relax and, and meet in some, somewhere that doesn't have to be super organized. We see it as a very, um, as a very civilized thing to do as well, and something that we're proud of, I think. No one can say for sure what direction pubs are heading in, but one thing is certain, they will always be a pillar of English culture as a home away from home. To me, the pub goer, it means a, a relaxed environment, a spontaneous night. You don't know where it's, you barely know it's going to start. Before you know it, you're down your local pub and you don't have any plans for the evening. You don't know where it's going to end and suddenly there's a band playing in your pub or you decide to grab something to eat. And I love the fact that you can just go there, start the evening and then, you know, probably like some, like the best things in life, an unplanned evening ends up being one of the best.